Dummy in London, hello. Oh, my printer still making noises. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My my substance of addiction, alcohol, my behaviour became equally addictive around people, places and things. Being with the right people in the right place, doing the right things. So these days that sort of still applies to an extent in as much as I don't drink on a daily basis but I do try and be with the right people in the right places with doing the right things so rather than wanting something it's about needs needs met needs to love others be loved back and be useful and do something which is useful for other people not as a do-gooder but maybe just doing a bit of good along the way so recovery uh, what follows after this video which is just about steps in action really <coughs> is the daily reflections and some reflections over the years and the step six from the 12 and 12 AA book uh, it's called 12 steps and 12 traditions so fellowship the fellowship of AA has helped me become more able to deal with life on life's terms so family community and you name it in society and professionals help me get to recovery and recovery is a one day event today so my reflections for today I've just put out there a couple of things um, and I, um, it goes like this family obligations which is part of daily reflections for, t for today from the AA books but this is my take on it in fellowship we learn we learn and learn over again how to love be loved and useful in unity, service and recovery, our feelings return and in early days of recovery often we are overwhelmed as by our feelings and then with time we find balance where our feelings match real life so we get to feel, feel life as it is. It takes time to practice these principles in all our affairs so we learn within the fellowship of AA how to love, be loved back and useful and the love that we experience is unconditional we don't have to do anything to receive it it just comes our way because we're part of something in unity service and recovery so we're there to help each other but when it comes to family and other elements of living when we put these principles into practice how to love be loved and useful it can be quite difficult we have to build trust we have to keep on learning what is happening right now in life it's not going to go away this thing called addiction because we can go back into our defects of character where we get fear we put on a brave face and ego stops us from absolutely being able to live in the moment because if we are in the moment and we are overwhelmed what are we going to do well, the simple answer is we say to ourselves maybe I'm overwhelmed and I need some help it can come from the people around us or it may come from fellowship we learn to trust it's okay not knowing quite how we feel about a situation and the next one was I love everyone in my family which I do deeply over the years in recovery my nearest and dearest have seen me change and they have changed most trust me and accept the new me and love me and they told me so not so long ago and it's important to me because uh, one or two members of my family are moving further away so thank God for electronic communications where we can keep in touch and we can do this daily like we always do. The exception is where one is still in the problem of addiction, deeply wounded and deeply wounding for everyone. Tolerance and love and cherish always is the key. So I can't change another person that I know. I know that you know a member of my family is having difficulties with addiction to alcohol and everything that goes with it so tolerance and love and cherishing is really important even when we are rejected and it's deeply hurting deeply wounding because we wish them well and love them so we do our best and if ever we can help we will but what it's brought up for me is I think I need to do something which I haven't done before and that's go to uh, a, a sister fellowship called Al-Anon and Al-Anon is all about how it is to live with 
people who are still in the addiction or have been and the impact it had on us as individuals and I know my childhood was blighted by alcoholism we didn't know what it was the person with the problem didn't know they had the problem because they just did what everybody else did so they thought and many did in their company because if we're heavy drinkers we go seek out heavy drinkers and we don't see anything wrong and back in the last century when all this, this was happening I guess ignorance was not bliss ignorance was fear fear of what was going to happen next because we never knew and that fear grew in me and what did I do? I took a drink to take the edge off and then in the end I ended up just like my father yeah he never got it until he was on his deathbed and then he stopped drinking when asked why have you stopped drinking you know, I think his consultant at the time said eat drink and be merry for tomorrow you won't be here or nearly like that and the answer was well I don't need to fear anything I know what's going to happen and so he stopped drinking and we found out who he was and we learned to love him again we never stopped loving him but we were able to express it openly so Al-Anon is on my agenda we've got to keep on learning how to live life and you know the impact of those days on me I suddenly realised a couple of weeks ago when it was brought home to me just how important it is to understand how we impact it on other people as well so next daily reflections from before for June 11th plus a bit about step well the complete reading of step 6 in the 12 and 12 enough for today Hello Don in London uh, Daily Reflections for June the 11th this video all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour my substance alcohol my behaviour equally to extremes whilst drinking seeing the world from the bottom of a glass so I share daily reflections I'm just one voice from AA there are many and we need to hear the many to make sense of our own lives often so for June 11th from the daily reflections book from AA reads like this family obligations a spiritual life which does not include family obligations may not be so perfect after all I can be doing great in the program applying it at meetings at work and in service activities and find that things have gone to pieces at home I expect my loved ones to understand but they cannot I expect them to see and value my progress but they don't unless I show them do I unless I show them do I neglect their needs and desires for my attention and concern when I'm around them am I irritable and boring or boring are my amends a mumbled sorry or do they take the form of patience and tolerance do I preach to them trying to reform or fix them have I ever really cleaned house with them the spiritual life is not a theory we have to live it and for me the spiritual life is living in reality the moment of now understanding for me that God is truth love and often the wisdom of others so I don't have the full picture unless I'm in the picture I'm not trying to control it and what helps me often is the serenity prayer to God or good conscience as is your understanding God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference is just for today Don in London hello and it's uh, June 11th 2009 my video is all about recovery from either addiction to substance or behavior or both uh, my substance alcohol my behavior trying to be perfect in everything uh, I'm not really getting an understanding of what is the plot of life or what is my life plan on a daily basis 
So what helps me keep sober one day at a time is family, community, professional help has been used in, in the past and on a daily basis particularly the fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. And I see it as a, a self-healing through fellowship process where there are 12 steps of action for a person to take to try and keep sober a day at a time. And believe you me, it's very hard just to be sober a day at a time and think or feel that there is some hope. So for a lot of, t lot of the time I was in active addiction in the last, last few years of my drinking. I really didn't know what was going on and I was isolated, I felt excluded and not, never a part of anything that was going on around me. And for all my life I suspect I wanted to be included, I wanted to be loved and I wanted something useful to do and sometimes it can be very very difficult and even when we're str striving to do our best at work, at research, at education, at just being alive on the planet it can be extraordinarily difficult and we need to learn it's okay to make mistakes, it's okay to start again, it's okay to have one's career dashed on the rocks and it's okay to try and pull oneself together very gradually Pulling ourselves together is not a very good coping strategy because it means we're trying to go back to where we were before. And the gift of recovery for me is to learn what is spiritual, what is emotional and what is physical well-being, as best it can be. Not striving to be perfect, but just learning how to be. And it's been a long journey. And it's only in the last, I don't know, maybe one or two years where I've, I've got a, a, a sort of opening to understanding how the world can be such a good place to be and alive. How many years spent wondering whether I wanted to wake up in the morning and face more fear, more brave facing and a brittle ego which was just sending me the wrong way. So I'm very lucky. Uh, the Fellowship of AA helps me on a daily basis with self-healing and at every meeting I go to there is a preamble shared uh, which goes like this. Now I don't speak for AA, never will. It's full of unique authentic people and it has one purpose and this is what it says in the preamble and this is why nobody represents AA Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is the desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So the primary purpose is, of the fellowship is simply that, to help us maintain sobriety a day at a time. And uh, I went to a really good meeting last night where somebody was sharing about um, what it's like to be in recovery and the difference from before to now and it's amazing the journey that we all go on I can't share their story because that's theirs and it's private and it's uh, anonymous so anonymity is really important it allows us to find our truth and if we can find the truth of now truth of now is about uh, honouring our spiritual connection the spiritual connection for me is simple it's right now reality with less denials and less filters and uh, a few words of encouragement to uh, somebody out there who has been I guess uh, felt that they've been I don't know pummeled and I don't know what the words are distressed by other people's criticism and judgment and the trouble is in life we're going to get lots of it and in the past we would drink on it so we wouldn't actually feel the pain but when we're sober, even when we're young in sobriety or older in sobriety, it can still sting when people offer criticism, judgment or judgmental um, words about our behaviour or what we've done. And the simple answer is, we are all doing our best, making the most of what we can do. And the more we are included, and the, we, the more we include ourselves in finding the solution in everything that we, we do with other people or by research, letting the world in and trying not to solve it all on our own we have a fighting chance I don't know, maybe not fighting either we have an opportunity to keep on making mistakes and keep on learning and it's difficult, it's really difficult 
So when I can't get to meetings in the morning, and what I do here is share information from this, as Bill sees it, he's one of the co-founders, just a, a reading or two on a daily basis, as many as you like. And then the daily reflections, uh, this covers the 12 steps in 12 months. So the 12 step action program is covered one a, one a month, and it's June, so it's step six, about having our defects removed, or working on our areas of personal development in spiritual, emotional terms, and physical. So those books help, and um, the 12 steps and 12 traditions, 12 steps for humans, 12 traditions for the fellowship uh, the 12 steps for humans all about being open honest and willing to change and let the world in and feel the pain sometimes there's much growth in pain and sometimes there's much growth in just happiness and the 12 traditions about keeping the fellowship safe safe to uh, recover have unity and we do service and by being included and part of um, putting putting the fellowship first lean on fellowship first and then the rest of life can work out. So sobriety is paramount to making life, I guess, run smoothly or not smoothly, depending on what is going on in our lives. But to be able to share what's going on and then let it out, express it, and make use of that learning as best we can. So the 12 steps, step six reads, <clears throat> we're entirely ready to have God remove our, all these defects of character. In other words, the seven deadly sins not possible uh, we can only make progress and it says here this is the step that separates the men from the boys well, I suppose the women from the girls so declares a well loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends he goes on to explain that any person capable of, of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six on all his faults without any reservations whatever has indeed come a long way spiritually and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator. Uh, it depends on your understanding of God as well in all of this. Mine is very simple. God is truth, God is love, and God works through people. So, you know, hold the mirror up. Uh, we're all part of nature and providence, and that's good. So, defects of character. Yes, we all have them. And no, they don't go away. But we can make progress and make sure that we're alert to what is going on and uh, when we're being confounded with life we don't actually start getting fearful putting on that brave face and ego coming up again we need to understand it's okay to keep on traveling and learning and experiencing life or what is the point it's all about the journey not the destination because we all know what that is in this one family uh, sorry daily, what did I say family daily reflections i'm not with it today Family obligations, June 11th. A spiritual life which does not include family obligations may not be so perfect after all. I can be doing great in the program, applying it at meetings, at work, and in service activities, and find that things have gone to and find that things have gone to pieces at home. I expect my loved ones to understand, but they cannot. I expect them to see and value my progress, but they don't unless I show them. Do I neglect their needs and desires for my attention and concern? When I'm around them, I'm, am I irritable and boring, or boring? Are my amends a mumbled sorry, or do they take the form of patience and tolerance? Do I preach to them, trying to reform or fix them? Have I ever really cleaned house with them? The spiritual life is not a theory. We have to live it. And that's so true. And, you know, living the spiritual life means we do make mistakes, and we do have to learn from them, and we can change our attitude and behaviour as we go along. And I keep on trying to get to as Bill sees it. Maybe I'll work on that tomorrow. I'm still stuck on the same page. But what's important for me is that I keep an open mind in recovery to all that is going on around me, including uh, where I can have areas of development. So, as I say at the end of this, uh, true God or good conscience or your higher power or whatever it is, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change today courage to change the things I can today and the wisdom to know the difference simply just for today. Don in London and it's June 11th 2008. Just check that is right. Thank you please. Yep, June 11th. Where did the days go? Anyway, a day in the life of me yesterday and today. So I'll be doing the Alcoholics Anonymous 
daily readings in a little, a little while. Um, a good day yesterday, but also strange. You know, we go through different types of learning around ourselves, uh, the things we use and utilize, um, relationships, not necessarily in that order. I think the priorities are often relationships and how we're doing. And uh, sometimes it's, it's a bit difficult to be in a relationship. And at the same time, it's wonderful because we're just finding out how to live life. So life has its ups and downs, and I'm glad it does. And I'm learning. I'm, le I'm a learner forever, I realize, every single day. And uh, it's a relief, actually, to be human. Last night, I went to Kensington, and uh, there was a meeting down at the bottom of Victoria Road called Kensington Shire Shares meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous and it was very good and I'll just read the preamble just to get myself into gear and I read this out last night and I do it here every day just about. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their prob common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And, you know, actually, AA is not allied to my videos either. And uh, AA has no leaders and it's a fellowship and it's not an organisation. So those caveats of uh, buyer beware, caveat emptor, and, you know, I'm glad that AA is not affiliated to my video logs because I'm just one person with a viewpoint here on YouTube or wherever it turns up. And I did a search of my name on, on uh, Google and it seems a lot of people have included my videos on their websites. So I don't know how I feel about that. Um, I don't feel about it at all, actually, is what people do. And what other people do is none of my business. What is my business is keeping this recovery resource going and uh, what, is, what it does. It sometimes helps a person who's in the middle of nowhere hear something about AA and what's going on. And you know, it's the extraordinariness of an ordinary life. And I never really realized all of these things because from a very early age, I think and feel that um, alcohol took too big, too big a part of my life, either to keep me happy, to keep me sad, to keep me level, to take the edge off. It did all those things, drinking, 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 every single day. And I know normal people don't do that, at least that's what I'm led to believe. But I also know from the National Health Service in this country, and they published the statistics on the web, in the, on the NHS Direct website, that one in 13 people in the UK, adult population, has a problem with drinking, and is probably dependent or alcoholic. So what do we make of that? The simple answer is, it's a personal journey for each person to work out what is best for them. And often we cannot work out is what is best for us when we're in the grip of some sort of dependency. And dependency comes in two categories, either some substance dependency or behavior dependency. So if it's a substance, it could be alcohol or drugs or coffee or sugar, anything that you find a need to take excessive quantities, I guess and behaviour around how we live, doing the same old things over and over again, wondering why we don't get a different result, we don't break out of wherever we are. And another thing, you know, learning how to accept help, how to accept help when we're told to uh, pull our socks up, pull ourselves together and give ourselves a good kick up the arse. And uh, th there's something out there in the, the world of psychotherapy, or I guess therapeutic process called cognitive behavioral therapy and uh, I don't know if I'm a fan or not because cognitive behavioral therapy is cognitive means thinking behavior thinking about our behavior being a therapy and understanding what we're doing and why and sometimes if we're not, not terribly addicted to something or just dependent or slightly dependent maybe cognitive thinking ourselves out of that particular emotional or emotional idea or way of life Maybe it works, I don't know. I don't know intellectually that I can give myself a kick up the arse. I don't know intellectually that I can pull myself together because behind the falling apart is our feelings. Our feelings never lie to us and sometimes we're overwhelmed by them. 
and I'm not overwhelmed by my feelings this morning. I'm overwhelmed. I'm not overwhelmed. Um, and things happen. Anyway, my bike had a puncture last night and it's, str it's stranded in the middle of nowhere. And I should get a bus to it today with a puncture repair outfit and pick it up. The daily readings of the AA, daily reflections, it's not a Bible, it's just a reference point. And June 11th, it says family obligations. A spiritual life which does not include family obligations may not be so perfect after all. From AA's big book, page 129. I can be doing great in the program, applying it to, to all meetings, at work, and in service activities, and finding that things have gone to pieces at home. I expect my loved ones to understand, but they cannot. I expect them to see and value my progress, but they don't, unless I show them. Do I neglect their needs and desires for my attention and concern? When I'm around them, am I irritable and boring? Are my men a mumbled sorry, or do they really take the, form of, take the form of patience and tolerance? Do I preach to them, trying to reform or fix them? Have I ever really cleaned house with them? The spiritual life is not a theory, we have to live it. And uh, that's so true of all we do. You know, the 12 steps of AA, the AA program are a program of change, and the, the idea behind it is that we get to grips with our behaviour, having got rid of the compulsion to keep on drinking, and then start to work on our behaviour and how we relate to the rest of the world. And often, you know, we have to start at home and work there. And one of, one of the things I'm realising in a relationship now is every day is different and uh, no two days are the same, nothing can be taken for granted. And there is a lot to do with tolerance, patience and love, mainly to do with ourselves and then to understand those principles, if we forgive ourselves for what we do when we screw up, then we need also apply the same to anybody else in the world, especially those we love. And often we don't, because I don't know what it is, sometimes we want to really feel that we are on the right side of right, when in fact there is no right or wrong, and there should be no, should be, there ought be no sides to an argument, just need to get over it. And uh, get back to love and tolerance. <coughs> anyway, page 167, in As Bill Sees It, Th these I do linearly, so progress rather than perfection, hooray. On studying the 12 steps, many of us exclaimed, what an order, I can't go through with it, Don't, do not be discouraged. No one among us has been able to maintain anything like perfect adherence to these principles. We are not saints. The point is that we are willing to grow along spiritual lines. The principles we have set down are guides to progress. We claim spiritual progress rather than spiritual perfection. And it goes on to say, We recovered alcoholics are not so much brothers in virtue as we are brothers in our defects, or that is, what we do too much of the wrong thing, and in our common strivings to overcome them. And sometimes, uh, we hang on to defects because we quite like them and uh, they don't hurt anybody really, do they? So, I don't know, I think they probably do. Coming on to, um, th those two books are my keystones for challenging me and my feelings and my thinking. And the 24 hour day book is a bit, a bit of a personal view from one person about how AA works for them. So, not approved by AA and uh, not proved by anybody. So June 11th, it says, we alcoholics have to believe in some power greater than ourselves. Or rather, I feel it just helps if we do. Yes, we have to believe in God. Well, good conscience and my connection to the universe is through, is through honesty, openness and willingness. Not to believe in a higher power drives us to atheism. Atheism, it has been said before, is blind faith in the strange proposi proposition that this universe originated in a cipher and aimless, aimlessly rushes nowhere. That's practically impossible to believe, so we turn to that divine principle in the universe that we call God. Have I stopped trying to run my own life? Well, yeah, I have. I stopped trying to run it without reference to other people's places and things. Um, I don't know if the proposition is, is that clear, as it says in that little 24-hour day book. It doesn't matter what I think. It's what you think. Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, 
so but one day at a time and that's what seems to work live in the day live in the moment find my spiritual connection to living in the in the moment of now spiritual life is real life everything is spiritual so all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual and what follows on one day at a time is also spiritual I suppose really the question is for anyone what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best and only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them so I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship that fellowship is AA and today I just want to read from this book 12 Steps and 12 Traditions which is the backbone I guess of much of what the fellowship is about 12 steps so we can live well open, honest and willing and the 12 traditions in fellowship unity, service and recovery sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time so what is AA? I just share off the preamble which is on this little card which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do to include people around being sober one day at a time and living a spiritual life knowing what our feelings are and not drinking so what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking and what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are so we try not to tell each other what to do but there are some principles involved and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tradi traditions help us to find a sober life and uh, June for me is all about step 6 so I share the step and also a commentary about how it works for me and step 6 it says here we were ready or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character so what are defects and what are assets or what are our liabilities and what are our assets but it probably boils down to the, in the biblical sense the seven deadly, seven deadly sins and also the seven virtues the opposite and if you look on the internet you'll find many a version and here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly right so pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities that interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God it has been called the sin from which all others arise pride is also known as vanity so pride is the first deadly sin or defect envy is the desire for others traits, status, abilities or situation gluttony the third one is an inordinate desire to consume more than one than more than that which one requires lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury it is also known as wrath wrath or wrath sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work and the opposite, if you like, the seven contrary virtues humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, diligence and the contrary virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the, the poem an epic poem written by Prudentius circa 410 AD 
an epic poem written. Practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins, humility against pride, kindness against envy, abstinence against gluttony, chastity against lust, patience against anger, liberality against greed, and diligence against sloth. So, very black and white, you're either one or the other. But in real life, what are we? We're all of those things at different times in our lives. And although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old-fashioned, we all have some sort of traits around those issues. And the twelve steps of the fellowship try to address this in, in the way I understand it in step six and step seven so step six is all about my defects of character and step seven is all about my shortcomings so my defects of character are the sins and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues short on virtue but in there somewhere is modern life and life as it is today and the changing values of society but around that is a personal code so these twelve steps principles these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living. And how we do that is entirely up to us. No one's going to stop us doing it another way. And if they were trying to stop us, our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way. We get stubborn and defiant often, or I did. So, step six in the fellowship program reads as this, with a bit of commentary from me. And don't forget, this is just a personal understanding. It's your understanding in the end which counts. And where do you get your personal understanding? From life. And also listening to the many voices in society, and probably in the fellowship of AA, if you stick around long enough. So, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. This is the step that separates the men from the boys or the women from the girls. So de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends. He goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly, step six, yes, he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly, step six, on all his, his faults, without any reservations whatever, has indeed come a long way spiritually and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator. And again, don't get hung up on creator. It's the God of your understanding or a power greater than you which counts in this. The common good often is used or utilised. Of course, the often disputed question of whether God can and will under certain, certain conditions remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member. To him, this proposition will be no theory at all. It will be just about the largest fact in his life. He will usually offer his proof in a statement like this. Sure, I was beaten, absolutely licked. My own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol change of scene, the best efforts of family, friends, doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism. I simply couldn't stop drinking, and no human being could seem to do the job for me. But when I became willing to clean house, that's step four, and then asked a higher power, God as I understand him, to give me release, my obsessions to drink vanished. He was lifted right out of me. Well, it didn't quite work that way, because I was a stubborn son of a gun, and I thought I knew better for a long time. But when I got to fellowship, I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said, self-will will run riot, and willpower will fail. And it was right. So I listened to the many voices. If God works through people, the wisdom came quick and easy for me. So I stuck around for quite a while, shivering, with, with fear, another one of my defects, until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people and then I started to learn. In AA meetings all over the world, statements just like this are heard daily. It is plain for everybody to see that each sober 
AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession. So in a very complete and literal way, all AAs have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives, and God has pre proceeded to do exactly that. And I would add to that, as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis, and listening and learning from others how to live life beyond, beyond just stopping drinking, then my defects of character seem to diminish. Personality traits don't go away completely, they just don't. But if we ask on a daily basis, at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects. When men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives, they commit a most unnatural act. Defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation, they seem bent upon self-destruction. They work against their, best, their own deepest instinct. As they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol, the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession. And uh, I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning, and as it says, humility kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liber liberality and diligence. So working on sober rather than working on the next drink. Here their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their creator's desires to give them new life, for nature and God alike abhor suicide. But most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all. Every normal person wants, for example, to eat, to reprodu reproduce, to be somebody in society, in the society of his fellows, and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things. Indeed, God made him that way. He did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol, but he did give, him, give man instincts to help him stay alive. It is nowhere evidence evident, at least in this life, that our Creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives. Indeed, that would be foolish to think that. So far as we know, it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives. Indeed, that would be unnatural. Since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires, it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose, and that's to do with our thinking and and our vices, I guess. When they drive us blindly, or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us, that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth, or as nature intended. That is the measure of our character defects, or if you wish, our sins. If we ask, God will certainly forgive all our derelictions, but in no case does he render us as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation. That is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves. He asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character. So indeed it is about building of character, and if we think about our youth where all our instincts and drives and desires were out of control, as we came into adulthood and then we find that we had to live in a society where we had to live to the norms and of course drink is not one of them to excess and then addiction but of course every other behaviour can be in that addiction too as many have found so step six we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job in other words to find balance in our natural drives and living so that we can be included in society. This does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was. A few of them may be, but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement. And that's the game, progress not perfect. Because if we try to be perfect from day one, we would fail. We, we would be back on pride and self-will. The key words entirely ready underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn. How many of us have this degree of readiness? 
in an absolute sense practically nobody has it the best we can do with all honesty that can we, that we can summon is to try to have it even then the best of us will discover to our dismay that there is always a sticking point a point at which we say no I can't give this up yet and we should often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry this I will never give up such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves no matter how far we have progressed desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God or as some say nature and providence as we've got to where we are in our nature and providence that is as the world is today some who feel they have done but well may dispute this so let's try to think about it a little further practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps no one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart nor so greedy that he is labelled a thief no one wants to be angry enough to murder lustful enough to rape gluttonous enough to ruin his health no one wants to be agonised by the chronic pain of envy or to be paralysed by sloth of course most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock bottom levels we who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves yet can we after all hasn't it been self-interest pure and simple that has enabled us, most of us to escape not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway but when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects then where do we stand and this is where it's about you and your you and your understanding of life however it turns out to be what we must recognize now is that we exult in some of our defects we really love them who for example doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow or even quite a lot superior isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition to think of liking lust seems impossible but how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds and even whilst staying within conventional bounds many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance indeed we can talk ourselves into anything I know this, I've done it self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable in a perverse way we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority gossip barbed with our anger and I'm right I'm smiling there because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery I mean the simple answer is the more self-righteous we are the more we are dogmatic the more we are stubborn and defiant about something we believe there is one path and it happens to be mine and what I've learned in recovery my path if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life gossip barred with our anger a polite form of murder by character assassination has its satisfactions for us too here we are not trying to help those we criticize we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness and uh, <coughs> I know this from things which have happened today self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good but if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous am I not also being self-righteous because I'm developing the argument so sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say desist of pen and tongue because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it even though we like to do it and to an extent I can do it too even now and then I think to myself I must laugh at myself and stop it because I don't know what is right for you and if I don't know what's right for you how do I know what's right for me which is why I always say I need to keep on learning when gluttony is less than ruinous we have a milder word for that too we call it taking our comfort we live in a world riddled with envy to a greater or lesser degree everybody is infected with it from this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction else why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not rather than working for it or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it 
and how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on. Only we call it only we call that retiring. Consider too our talent for procrastination, which is really sloth in five syllables. Nearly anyone can make a good list of, the, of such defects as these, and few of us would, be se would seriously think of giving them up, at least until they cause us excessive misery. And without a doubt, if we go hell for leather in one direction, thinking we're right, and we wonder why nobody's following us, we do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up. But if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right, or that my way or the highway is the right way, then we are alone again and isolated. And we may not drink, but we're certainly not as sober as we could be. Some people, of course, may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them, but even these people, if they construct a list of still milder defects, will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them. Therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection. We want to settle for only as much perfection as, it will, as will get us by in life, according of course to our various and sundry ideas of what will get us by. So the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God, of God. Yeah, so we progress and are not perfect. We realise some of our potential, but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them. Many, many will ask at once ask, how can we accept the entire implication of step six? Why? That is perfection. This sounds like a hard question, but practically speaking, it isn't. Only step one, where we made the 100% admission we were powerless over alcohol, can be practiced with absolute perfection. The remaining 11 steps state perfect ideals. So, perfect ideals. So, strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals. But, you know, strict adherence on a daily basis, life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways. So, defects, as well as virtues will be around. There are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress. Seen in this light, step six is still difficult but not at all impossible. The only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying. And that's it. We make a beginning and keep trying. So contingent on the day we ask for help and refocus ourselves around the virtues Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence. We are on a better wicket, if you like, if you're a cricketer. If we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol, we shall need to make a brand new venture into open-mindedness. We shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction. It will seldom matter how haltingly we walk the only question will be, are we ready? So, contingent on the day we ask, are we ready to let go righteousness and every other excessive, excessive outlook or personality trait? Are we ready? And the only answer is, yes, really. Or, if, you're, if we are stubborn and, and defiant and angry, the answer may be no. So we keep on trying. Looking again at those defects we are still unwilling to give up, we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn. Perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say, this I cannot give up yet. But we should not say to ourselves that I will never give up. Let's dispose of what happen appears to be a hazardous open end we have left. It is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection. We know that some delay, however, might be pardoned, that word in the mind of a rationalising alcoholic could, con could certainly be given a long-term meaning. He could say, how very easy, sure, I'll head towards perfection, but I'm certainly not going to hurry. Maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely. 
Of course, this won't do. Such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalisation. At the very least, we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible. Or complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked, or we provoke others. The moment we say no never, our minds close against the grace of God, or common sense. After all, what else would God's words be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man? We're not talking rocket science here, we're talking common sense. Delay is dangerous and rebellion may be fatal. This is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us, as nature intended, nature and providence. All these wonderful words I like because... You know, spiritual is now. Spiritual is in the moment. It's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday. Although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now. And either we accept life on life's terms, acceptance is the key always, or we get into trouble again. And it's being defiant or angry against our situation often. That life isn't giving us what we think we deserve. So just a reminder, the contrary virtues were derived as follows yeah. humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth and step six the seven deadly sins or removal of them is subject to asking on a daily basis how am I going to live today how do I want to behave how do I want to be open honest and willing to change my attitude and behavior to fit my circumstances and do my feelings fit my life right now if we've been good in our step four life story and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily and also our shortcomings, the virtues, which is all about step seven. I don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation. I can have a step six day full of defects of character if I'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behavior. Or I can have a better day with a bit of courage, faith, confidence around humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence. And I'm a slow learner and often have been a poor student in the past. I was criticized deeply by someone when they, I said I was a poor student in the past or I could be a poor student. And it was pounced upon as a defect. It's a defect to keep on point, pointing it out. My defect would be not to say it, if you get my drift. So these are my views and understandings of step, step six and seven. So how does it work for me on a daily basis? Well, in the morning I say, how am I feeling, why, and what can I do? And if I feel okay, given my current situation, my feelings fit my, my experience right now, then life is understandable and comprehensible. I can, I can get on with it. But if my feelings don't fit my current reality, my feelings are over the top in some way, in a particular direction of those defects or sins, or my virtues are without foundation, courage, faith and confidence, over elated, I need to ask myself, why am I feeling this way? And that's not to actually analyse to death. How am I feeling? Why and what can I do? Is a very great starting point. I don't know how I feel right now. Why? Because I'm giving it. I'm giving it second thought. What can I do? Consider my options today. Or if I wake up angry, fearful, resentful, or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do, then I need a bit more courage, faith, and confidence. And I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being not necessarily in fellowship, but somebody who I love and loves me back. And that's unconditional love. It's not dependent on anything else other than love 
to and from people who care. Something my father said, he wished he had cherished my mother more and been less superficial and indifferent. And I think that sums it up. Cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent. And the only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people. So the steps work for me daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone inclusively and not just me so I'm merely a player and I'm not the chief critic anymore I hope although I will be chief critic in my own life often and sometimes flail at others and be critical but it does me no good and it does them no good step six June, step 7 July. I can have a bit of both in each day. I can have a, a fairly bad start or a fairly good start. Enough courage, faith and confidence to keep on going or I could have fear, very facing and ego in my heart. It's as life is and it's often better if I talk to another human being or get to a fellowship meeting where I can see what is working for others so I can join in and be a part of again. Freedom to choose life. Life on life's terms, always a unique and authentic path for each person. And in fellowship with one similarity, a desire to be sober today. The Serenity Prayer is where I finish all my videos, hopefully, to do with recovery, without the screeching of the police cars going past. On Gracious me, a typical London night where I live. Anyway, serenity prayer. Yes, I even sleep through all of that during the night, often, and then get told about it by my neighbours. So to God, or in good conscience, the serenity prayer is as follows. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today.